Okay, hello everyone. It's February the 11th, late at night, just hours away from a really historic energy interface, if you want, as that comet, that green blue comet, will cross through the sun earth plane which is called the ecliptic which is the main reference plane we have within space so the comet is cutting through that in a few hours and just actually an hour or two before that will happen mars will conjunct the comet and you won't believe it will be exactly at the root of the chart of the global chart for Greenwich 0, 0, 0 west so that is the dividing line of eastern and he western hemisphere I guess if any particular single area to be looked at as a fractal of earth then it is the zero meridian so Mars right down here 13 12 36 is the exact reading where the comet and Mars meet naturally you can't see the comet in here it's not in part of the program that has been has to be calculated separately and again I would like to give um, many thanks to Ron Ron Scott who has um, actually developed a whole website dedicated to exact ephemeris data for a whole number of newly found objects planets small planets um, you name it comets so uh, thanks ron that is a great service to the astrology commune as this is cutting edge this is what we have to um, be opening ourselves to to receive all these new planetary fractal informations uh, adding new facets to the complexity of reality anyway that one which is just coming in from a 50,000 year orbit as I've told you the C forward slash 2022 E3 set TF that's my spelling it's or CTF whatever if you're American comes back from 50,000 year journey and that links us definitely energetically back to the continent of Mu the last continent of Mu which was which is an esoteric teaching but as we know uh, that's the best we can get from history our scientific history and 6,000 years prior to where we are now anything beyond that is pure speculation in that sense however there are sources esoterically which speak of Atlantis actually Plato is one which has still direct testimony of having seen documents in Alexandria which originally came from Atlantis that is maybe 500 before um, uh, before Christ before um, our time count started so Anyway, let's not get lost in details here. And that is actually a little bit of the tricky thing about our present time, that the mercurial energy is so strong, with Mars here powerfully in Gemini boosting um, that mercurial force of on one hand, um, Mercury is really the the interface you could say between the world and consciousness it's mercury is kind of the grid we are putting over reality it helps us to get systematic mercury is definitely the one which is all about mental capacity in that sense also about memory and the projection Mercury is the interface I say it is the communicator Mercury is in Aquarius now so 
This is a powerful degree, 13 degrees and 12 minutes particularly. This is the descendant of the American Nations chart. How about that? Hmm? Mars and the comet meet exactly here. This is a great activation. Hmm? This is really an activation of many, many individuals because this again is a fractal chart, uh, the chart I'm using, the American People's Chart. It's actually m more of a, of a real new be beginning of new earth, could, you could say, in a much vaster perspective, because the American dream is big. It was put in place that constitution holding up freedoms and sovereignty and, and being a republic, which is the real deal, as we know, as, we, as I have learned. These were enlightened people who um, gave birth to, who, who did the dream this into reality, the new world. Hmm? That's how the American, particularly in North America, was named uh, coming from Europe. Yes, that was the new world. And that's symbolic again. So that, that date, 4th of, Jan, uh, of July 1776, which actually is that time of the year when the sun is at its farthest uh, from Earth. Actually, we should say it differently. Earth is at its farthest from the sun at um, Apogee, which is the place where which actually defines earth's orbit around the sun it's a, defin a, a, a powerful point of defining the whole structure of the earth sun system that point where the planet is farthest away from the sun and actually is an ellipse on the, the other side perfectly is the place where the planet in that sense earth is closest to the sun so january 4th july 4th plus minus a few days because of leap days and such so you see this is a, an activation of that i would say it's 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 really the the moment when we step into the open and, and become uh, loud, uh, visibly loud with our thinking. We don't hold back anymore. We do not censor ourselves anymore. That's kind of that kind of power. It's that Mars energy is powered by this comet's frequency from the lost continent of Mu, literally carrying that frequency of that knowing that everything is interconnected it was a matriarchal society as we are told where there was clairvoyance and clairaudience people felt like connected to each other and to nature that's again coming it's really the circle closing and this is a great omen this comet actually it's still visible actually this is one of its best visibility periods overall that window now we have between roughly the 9th and the 12th 15th of february i showed it to you in my last um, uh, video uh, on which day you can see it where Actually, I do have a picture open here on my browser. Let me just show it to you. Okay, we'll just take a sec here to fully load. This is the big solar flare we had today. Around um, 4 p.m. Uh, universal time, an X flare. You can expect the sun get way more active in the next few days. Uh, just show you this picture here. Here you see this is the present uh, 
chicken pox you could say the sun is going through hmm? all these many powerful vortices where energy can be exploding out of in huge solar flares like this one here and you see that's what happens when the x-ray wave arrives this fries the upper atmosphere to the degree that shortwave radio frequencies are guessing totally um well it's called um it's called an um, a blackout and so the the frequencies get distorted it's it's really an uh, beaming energy at earth and interestingly enough this x flare was beamed at south america okay don't forget brazil brazil is another one which is of the high contenders of first real breakthroughs on this pilgrimage i would call it almost towards a freedom to take back our sovereignty that's pretty much what it boils down to what's going on right now the big awakening the great awakening and we are in the middle of it this is a powerful powerful sequence of days we are right in and i just want to show you where this goes this is um the moment when the sun enters pisces that is six days from now here you see the sun zero zero and what you see here this is an applying conjunction of mercury and actually if moon and mercury you see the moon at four, 10 degrees 44 10 degrees 45 just about a minute or so away from exactly conjuncting mercury this is super powerful this is a big pressure which is building up which is just about coming to its um apex you could say because before uh, that is uh, still uh, the pressure building and then you see the black moon here right at front and center yes uh, it's time the uh, shit will hit the fan big times believe me so better be ready for that the, i mean it's been going on for a long time long time coming but we are here this is the moment short before the water shoots over the cliff into the waterfall into the free fall to restructure everything that's what it will be i guess we have a visitor here that's my lovely puppy coming to say hello hello yatsi okay that is recording yes thank you okay so the curtains the last curtains will drop that's what it is um yes yatsi that is busy thank you so we are hours away from this event mars and the comet uniting that's this chart and then just a few hours later we have this event here the comet cutting through the ecliptic and this is big this is really where this energy gets infused and, uh, and spread out into the whole plane of planetary how would you say that it's a planetary equator it's the equator all planets kind of are grouping around that so this is an infusion not just for earth in particularly as it is the earth sun plane so it is the primary infusion point is into that duality between sun and earth if you want which is the basic um, paradigm we're in of body and spirit hmm? the sun being the spirit so the comet infusing in this into this 
plane and this is actually the heliocentric chart of that moment let's go back first to the geocentric that will take probably a minute thinking anyway before we are off here look at this mercury 808 sagittarius remember mars turned direct again at 807 gemini as seen from earth and i i know i do um, compare the heliocentric and the geocentric charts a lot of each other even though they're totally different planes but they resonate with each other these uh, these degrees overlap it's like one is the the ghost and the other one is the um the um the manifest form and they can definitely be um in different locations that that's may, makes the whole thing very interesting about heliocentric astrology being the um representative of the energy we are consuming because i mean this is an instant thing it takes eight minutes for the energy of the sun in light speed to reach earth for the light to reach earth it takes eight minutes so the energy of the sun is encoded in the energy and each little packet of energy each photon each muon or whatever you call these particles um, each carries a fractal of that information is coded hmm? and that's what we breathe that's what we ingest that's the energy so therefore it is always kind of that Okay, here we are now in the geocentric. Okay, that took a while. Actually, that um, this is the chart we are looking at. And you see here now, when that happened, actually for both the events, you see this is 9.08 a.m. in Greenwich when the comet cut through the ecliptic and if we go back to this chart this is 718 so it's less than two hours between those two big events now why is this so important in the first place that mars and the comet pretty much simultaneously are in that powerful plane there's some mystery going on there and i definitely have not resolved that um, in its completion that is not possible but definitely there are some very strong hints that mars is very very big involved actually mars is the direct intake of that comet's energy in many ways so let me tell you the story just um for those of you who have visit uh, uh, watched that last one you will know that already but it's worth repeating so when the planet um, the comet was discovered there was a powerful mars venus pluto comet cluster the comet was at the leading edge of that group mars venus conjunction pluto this in itself is uh, extremely potent um, new beginning you could say uh, that venus mars conjunction is always a a sprouting seed and into many different directions it's extreme potency of creation a new design is coming in and with the comet at three degrees um, Aquarius at its discovery and 
I really wanted to tell you what the Sabian symbol is of that third degree of Aquarius, that two degrees 21 Aquarius, that was the discovery position. A deserter from the Navy. <laughs> okay, here we have it. Someone who starts thinking of their own. Mm -hmm. That's what it really is. The individual's self-realization through a crucial repudiation of a collective status which has become unbearable. How about that? Isn't that exactly what's going on on this planet right now? Hmm? That we finally decided no more. I'm not being a puppet for the sake of some influential people whom we are given um, a little boxish here and there just do enough to survive no that's no more enough that's kind of what it is and this comet is truly um, empowering mars to have that courage to say no and to walk out that's really what's going on and with this position in itself this in itself is just really pushing it down into the root it, it, it this is this is coming from deep within and then the 14th degree of gemini which that is starting at 000 till 0, 13, uh, 59 is the 14th degree It's another one which I um, thought was worth um, sharing. Bridging physical space and social distinctions, two men communicate telepathically. Beautiful. It really shows that we are starting to feel how we are all interconnected. That's what this 14th degree is. And in this um, power we find within ourselves of standing up, of being strong. It is, this is really, uh, in a, I was thinking about it. I could say this is the initiation of the male principle into power. It is a true rekindling of that of that divine male energy which is just being himself herself no puns intended as we say in english but nor no pun dependent <laughs> anyway but it is um regardless of anything just standing in your power being yourself and there's nothing really which can be lost anymore at this point either everything is lost or everything is gained we're at this uh, critical place and it seems that is what was necessary to be pushed to this place we have i mean let's be honest each of us we have been evolving enormously over the last two three years alone I'm not even saying what was before but we have definitely become more aware and in that sense more able to know where to walk and where to be cautiously st staying away from don't touch it just leave it alone but be very very watchful of where you are so it is a technique of transcendence which comes in here the 14th and the 19th and the 4th and the 9th and the 24th and the 29th degree they have always something in common which is about a technique 
it's the fourth stage of a five degree cycle and this is what the Sabian symbols are structured on it, each five degree cycle has a new theme in that sense so the fourth in that sense the ninth and so on they give a technique and that is very interesting here and now let me go back to the american chart here for a moment because again this is much more than the american nations chart this is the the new world i i really should rename this this is the the base chart for the new world and we have we are just coming out of in that sense a puberty if you want i mean it's only 200 what is that not even 250 years old yet which is nothing for a civilization this is growing up through infancy taking on true responsibility realizing that we can't give our power away to anybody be it even the most beautiful um, idea of, 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 of spiritual force we have to recognize that this force is within, within us we each are a, an expression of it we are God become manifest on this planet and that is not just true for us humans it's true for each animal each plant it is the way we have to see it and we are all divine hmm? and we have to take ownership of that and I guess that's really what's going on that male energy is coming into power and this is tomorrow the 12th of February is a powerful day I bet now um, there's a few other things um, I guess I'm cutting it short a little bit this video of, I cut out a few charts here um, I want really to bring through the essence right now so then there is this Neptune's discovery chart actually this is Neptune's incarnation chart how Neptune and Neptune again is like all plants and everything is animated and that means it's it has a, an anima a soul uh, it's a it's a consciousness uh, and Neptune has a very very refined consciousness and 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 also very complex it allows to see in to many dimensions simultaneously i like to look at neptune as a double-sided mirror either you never know are you looking through to the other side or are you just reflecting something which you beam onto neptune is the final big planet of our solar system and i would say pretty certain i mean neptune is 30,000 kilometers in diameter that is two and a half times earth's diameter that is really a big body so neptune is the outer post of keeping it all together in place it is the interface also to the cosmos so neptune has its monthly lunar return here and um, with moon and south node here at the 10th house cusp of this global chart again which means Neptunian energies are really becoming to the forefront of our um, focus, recognition, concern. And Neptune is very malleable too. Neptune is, is like a dream in a way. It can shift and change in no time. It's the world of imagination and naturally illusions, deceptions, um, all the lower frequency things are included too but 
Neptune is going through an upgrade. I guess that's one way one could say it. Neptune is, again, a, you could say a fractal of what's going on. It is a representative of that transformation we are going through. And as I've shown you in other videos, Neptune is really the focal point uh, where all roads will eventually meet. This is very beautifully visible in Uranus um, already having visited the uh, ascendant of the Neptune discovery chart last year. There will be a final connection in early May. This is kind of my target zone of where things likely will be I wouldn't say resolved, but clarified. Clarified to the degree that everybody knows. Everybody knows everything. It's just a matter of still some minor um, struggles uh, to, 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 to be taken care of because there's too much to take care of all at once. So it will have to go in stages and meanwhile whoever is still running loose and wild will, will try and do everything in their power to disrupt and that will still be going on but it is these are just little flare-ups in a way overall by early may yes and that is now the window we are in where the big unveiling happens where the big shift of power occurs between roughly the 10th and the 20th of February. I just want to go back to this chart. I mean, I wanted to stay away from the American nations charts just to shorten it a bit and do this in a separate one. But I showed you this a long ago that by this is the secondary progressions of that um, new world chart. I really think that's what I will rename it to the new world, the new earth. This this was the conception of it, yes. And the United States has been uh, really chosen in that sense to be the uh, the the birthplace i mean it's it is the best way to say it that the, the where the where all the possibilities would be having an equal chance to develop and to flourish and and it is that atmosphere of competition which is um very helpful if it's done in a fair way so anyway i just wanted to show you uh, this quickly here yes this is the, the, their birth chart with that Sag rising and Mars and Venus and Jupiter and the Sun all in the seventh house so if we um, do a um, secondary progress chart that means every day after that 4th of July counts for one year so whatever it is now 240 some years means 240 some days after that so you see 240 that brings you into Pisces and that's where you see the American nations progressed Sun is here in Pisces a new moon approaching so what is particular about this chart yes is Uranus here by um, progression and the midheaven by progression are coming together this is sparking something new uranus will shift in that sense from the 10th progressed house into the ninth and you will see this is within days i can animate here so you see this is the 22nd and when we then go forward 24th 25th six and here we go then it jumps over into the ninth house so this is a very uranian influence and it comes through the gemini energy of 
which again is Mercury, which is curiosity at its core, wanting to understand, wanting to observe and see and look at everything. It's it's the the sensory experiences which Mercury stands for. So. I mean, I could go on for a long time about this chart alone. I just really wanted to point out Uranus here for now and also showing you how exact this chart seems to be. And uh, thanks to Dane Rudiar, uh, who did the um, rectification of this chart, of this base chart for the new world. So let's now see so we have here um mars conjuncting the planet uh, the, the comet and i didn't even say that yet yes the moon just by eight minutes of arc at the south node definitely a clear clear indications there's something linking us back to the past to a magical and mystical time this is a, a very powerful area of the zodiac hexagram 28 greatness in excess so this is a, a powerful inflow and it expresses through 27 which is nourishment bringing it down into the ground planting the seeds which uh, which uh, this is a really the time of planting seeds of, of dreaming <coughs> excuse me this reality into into form and then um, tx300 i love this little planet this is that boldness loudness which sometimes is necessary to make yourself heard it's kind of the megaphone really resonated with the trucker convoy in 2022 and that is him huh? yes <laughs> anyway that is the nodal axis when uh, we have this infusion of comet energy with mars and with the sun earth plane see the moon has just moved a bit more than a degree in that um, short while now in between here we have um, not just neptune's lunar return but there is this chart also which is saturn exactly conjuncting that new world's moon mm -hmm. Yeah, let's just be consistent, call it New World. That is really the the, the best way of, of understanding this job because it's really way bigger than the freedom movement in the United States, which is a representative of this naturally. But it's also that all the freedom-loving people on, on this planet, I guess I can really say that we are rooting for uh, these freedom fighters uh, to get their sovereignty back because these are the people who are fighting the battle on, uh, on uh, ground zero, you could say. And if they succeed, then everybody will win it will be rippling out i mean we know that this is no this is no secret wherever it uh, the breakthrough first happens it will ripple out from there and it is interesting that brazil and the united states are on that same axis actually have almost the same progressed charts it's unreal the whole thing i will suddenly cover that again more too in another video yeah this <laughs> You get the story there's always too much to share here so then the next one yes is this one when the saturn is exactly on the american moon which is 27 12 in aquarius and you see this happens just within this window it's kind of 
whimsical um, uh, how important alignment happen at the same time now what does that mean Saturn being on the moon it means a, it's kind of a sobering it's um, a reality check it can be kind of harsh and difficult and certainly is uh, to many people uh, to the realization that they have been duped and cheated and, and deceived and that the whole, everything is corrupt nothing can be trusted uh, anymore so this is kind of the frequency I'm getting out of this and again happening exactly when the comet cuts through the ecliptic um, really uncanny then um, let's see what I have here right that is then the comma cutting through the plane of the ecliptic this chart um, uh, with Aries rising Capricorn midheaven here Quavar and Pholus actually pretty dead on exact the midheaven Folus is that um, energy of jumping into something new, of daring to go into the unknown. Hmm? Very powerful character and also very charismatic because it is that confidence and trust which is all you need it, it, the, the rest falls in place because you're a generator your heart is a powerful generator and the more confidence and trust there is the, the brighter is your heart's electromagnetic field and you and literally as you walk through life harmoniously things assemble around you according to your heart's frequency that's how it works so and then Quawar Actually, these two will be close together for the next about 50 years. Yes, uh, you heard right. <laughs> Unreal. I guess 2063 or so, they're so, uh, starting to um, separate. They walk exactly in lockstep. Quawar is an initial challenge, which is difficult. It's kind of breaking through a barrier through a and and there's there's definitely some pain involved when the Merkwawar shows up but in hindsight it's always worth it that's kind of the energies we have here at the 10th house cut very beautiful also this is um in the new world's chart Eris is here Eris which is the feminine principle of justice and of challenging all the different parties involved to battle out their looming conflict to bring it into the open and to once for all make sure that we are at the highest level of rightfulness and justice uh, these are very high principles but again it is worth going through some upset that's this energy you see here you see and when we go back to your quickly eight degrees um, and eight minutes that's Aries in the new world's chart and this is the one okay now the next chart I have here for you let me see right so then on that same day tomorrow 
I mean, within the next 12 hours or so from where I am and recording this. Okiroi will have its final conjunction of Neptune. Okay, that's yet a totally new story. I haven't talked much about that yet. Okiroi is an amplifier. Okiroi is, is kind of laying out the red carpet or, or giving it an additional um, weight, an, an additional coloration or making it bigger, blowing it up, kind of that's the energy I get from Okiroi, whatever it touches it is conjunct Neptune naturally that is enlarging that Neptunian principle and it's it can be overwhelming naturally Okiroi is a centaur planet it takes at least uh, uh, maybe 40 years or so I'm not exactly remembering but something like that so this is a one in 40 or 50 year aspect here the final conjunction it had already two last years last year and this is the final conclusive one now first of all while this happens Neptune has a conjunction of Venus. This is beautiful. This is um, bringing the energy of the evening star hmm, into the center of our attention. And Venus is now in beautifully, beautiful place in Pisces really resonating with that compassion and that we are all um, in this together that we are here to help each other and eventually hold each other's hands and things like that be there for one another it is very much also in that s sense of of interconnectedness of picking up yes there is um whatever is around me is me as well it's the Piscean energy so Venus helps to generate the positive balance if you want of, of this chart because it is definitely that many of the dark sides of Neptune are so much enlarged these present days so overblown it's actually more a caricature um, uh, many times you can't believe this is real I mean I'm not watching the news much but just a little snippets I see it's unreal how grotesque I mean just think of the Grammys of, of that um, um, prize winning <coughs> performance sponsored by yes you know whom Pfizer <laughs> someone made a joke if they were uh, costuming blood clots anyway enough of that <laughs> it's a crazy world out there in other words that's what this Neptune Okiroi really makes even bigger and larger it can't be overlooked anymore so the contrast is really there and with the sun Saturn conjunction here and this is true for that whole day we are getting into this sun Saturn conjunction that yearly which is a restructuring of the solar um, principle of it's it, Saturn always you could say Saturn is the missing link between spirit and manifest life forms. Saturn gives the structure. Saturn is the <coughs> the plan. Hmm? So anyway, this Sun Saturn conjunction, and then I mean, speak of Neptune when Neptune was discovered I showed it in my last video I have to watch it if you're curious Neptune's discovery chart has Neptune 
and Saturn both here in the 26th degree of Aquarius 25 something so you see Neptune and its discovery chart together with Saturn is honored here by Sun and Saturn uh, it's, a, it's a beautiful symmetry so this in itself shows that yes watch out for Neptune Neptune is really the the one which gets all the energy in the end it goes from the let's say from the comet into Mars Mars being in Gemini beaming its energy through Mercury Mercury being the planet of Gemini that means uh, it is getting that resonance it feels that Mars in uh, in, um, in, so, in its own sign and Mars as you see is now here in the first degree second degree of Aquarius and coming out of a conjunction with Pluto this is um, a mental challenge but very beautifully powerfully placed Mercury here and then whatever mercury the investigative mind the communicative spirit is concluding whatever that is is finally a recognition of neptune that is the kind of the flow of the energy right now now um let's look at this chart a little more this is actually quite a, a magical interconnection with that 20th degree of um, Aquarius and Leo these two degrees I um, just found this was quite eerie actually so that same degree we have here let me just see this is to um okay well, let's just go through the charts here quickly right here you have it hmm. when mars has its conjunction with the comet hmm? this powerful infusion that is at the ascendant this degree this same degree now we see here at the moment okiroi and neptune conjunct in midheaven now and that same degree again is coming up here at the descendant this time when the comet on March 3rd which is still quite a while away will cut through or I should say it differently would be exactly above Earth's equator hmm? zero declination means it is perfectly above Earth's rotational axis which is the equator which is the the most particular infusion into the Earth's um, energy grid hmm? so this will be a powerful final moment um, of infusing with its energy and then a t couple days later actually the comet turns direct as it has gone backwards for months on end now in from our perception and it goes direct at 8 degrees 21 in Gemini those of you who have followed me know that Mars has gone direct on January the 12th at 8.07 Gemini again a Mars connection and actually one more are you ready <laughs> on January 12th the comet had its closest approach to the Sun its perihelion 
and two hours later Mars turned direct. It's uncanny the connection between those two which really gives a strong um, confirmation to what I um, totally resonate with this information by um, uh, Magenta Pixie transmitting information from the white winged collective consciousness of nine so they call this comet the green star seeded comet of deliverance codes for humanity okay so this has something to do with star seeds it's an activation of all those of us who have come here with a particular job, with a particular job description. Hmm? We are carrying that information in our personal instructions, as, as Jacqueline Hobbs says, Oracle Girl. Another one of my um, personal sources, inspirations I'm getting from. Yes, the green star seeded comet of deliverance codes for humanity. Deliverance codes. Deliverance is a liberation. Hmm? So this comet infuses information into the collective field, which will give us the inspirations the ideas of how to redeem ourselves how to overcome the um, restrictions and what not it's about breaking through to a new level of expression that's literally what it is and I mean, it's so beautiful also here in this chart. I mean, I could speak for hours about each of those charts, but this stands out as Mercury Saturn conjunction, Mercury separating from Saturn. So the compression has happened already. It's now in its delivery phase with Saturn in the last degree of Aquarius. This is a uh, profoundly rich experienced Saturn in that Aquarian field of resonating with the collective it's a structuring the collective I said it and I'm still saying it till beginning of March March 5 7 around that when Saturn enters Pisces this is an excellent time for building a, a, so, a kind of a structure a societal structure a network of friends and of like-minded people which has definitely happened over the last two years it was again kind of forced to happen almost we had no other choice than to link up with each other virtually on screen and things like that but that has been really the aquarian way of interconnection and that network is now in place and this will be used to disseminate this piscean <coughs> frequency of understanding without words that's really what it is that's why mercury and pisces is usually not said to be the best placement because really uh, words become futile at some point of you're just sensing it there's no need to put it in words that's kind of why probably then mercury is not that versatile because it doesn't have that much practice in expressing itself in verse but that's kind of the frequency it's it's a it's also a very poetic way of interacting and it so happens that this also is the 
birthday chart pretty much of the comet's discovery it was march 2nd 2022 so the comet's discovery chart is here um has actually sun and moon here so it really seems that whatever was seeded is now sprouting very powerfully with that moon here in zero degrees leo just entered uh, the sign of uh, of of leo of, of being that shining light bright and powerful and confident uh, one of the big words for leo sovereignty is a key factor for leo and again yes you see now that 20th degree axis and i really want to review that because that kind of shows again a major theme of our times <coughs> so let's start with the 20th of aquarius which we have here at the descendant and then in this chart here we have it at the midheaven the okirovi neptune conjunction and in this chart here we have it at the ascendant so it's it's really on all major angles except the fourth house cusp so let's go back to the final one here this one here come on oh i pressed the wrong button okay that happens the 20th degree of aquarius a large white dove bearing a message the answer of spiritual agencies to thorough sustained and victorious individual efforts This concludes most significantly this series of five symbols. The individual who has gone courageously and with indomitable spirit through this crucial crisis receives, as it were, a deep spiritual blessing from the soul realm. How beautiful is that? Hmm? Mission accomplished. Peace be with you. This is very, very auspicious times we are in. And it is um, it is hard to believe that we are actually there right now. And it's good to know that because it, it isn't time of extremes. There's no question. So the 20th degree of Leo, which is at the other end of this axis, which here again is the ascendant. And this final touchdown chart into Earth's grid. Sunni Indians perform a ritual to the sun. A return to the glorification of natural energies beautiful of falling in tune of nature that's all we need nature is already most powerful if we align with nature with nature within ourselves with the nature of our environment if we are tuned into the sun and the moon and the weather and the wildlife the trees going out to nature every day very important tuning into that space of wordlessness where no thoughts are necessary where it's just the pure resonance of of being that is where we are returning to so let's just go to a couple more charts here before we call it um, a recording let's just be specific here right so right 
Right, that is the next one which I found very important. This is now um, still a couple days away and this is the final two and a half degrees of Aquarius. Saturn is entering the last fractal part. If you divide the 30 degrees of Aquarius into by 12, you get 12, two and a half segments. And this last one is having the Capricorn frequency, the Capricorn overtone or what you want to call it. So Aquarius energy with a Capricorn undertone, which are both Saturn's signs, we can see a culmination, a, a, a real stabilization, stabilizing of, 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 the, of the support structures. Let me just close the door here. Okay, here I am again. So yes, um, so Saturn entering the last phase, this is February 14 and will be coming to a conclusion by March the 7th when Saturn enters Pisces. So anyway, first of all, Saturn is elevated here. Saturn is really the most prominent planet in this chart, that's obvious right conjunct the sun in midheaven the sun pretty exactly conjunct neptune now in its discovery chart again to remind you of this the moon opposing the degree where the mars has change directions 807 and where the comet will turn around 821 found that very interesting in this chart so then the mercury black moon opposition oh okay i guess we are getting really to the place where as i said before uh, big big stuff is 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 popping into the open just um, for example how now openly in the Turkish parliament harp is being blamed and openly they know uh, they tell everybody yes that's how it works that was something actually Tesla already discovered that with simple resonance he actually said he could split earth in two that's that's a quote I heard from at least reported to be said by Tesla. Anyway, everything is coming into the open. Nothing can be uh, suppressed anymore. It's really the light has just become so strong. <coughs> There's no word, nowhere to hide anymore, literally. Then... Um, Right, <laughs> new moon, no, not new moon, a sun at Pisces ingress, the one we looked at before, I really want to quickly come back to that one, because this is then when the ice fully breaks. Anyway, it's super exciting, and um, those who know what's coming even if just energetically we don't need to know the fine print we will be at the right place in the right time we are um, in resonance we are awake yes <laughs> that's what it said still many things we do not know but at least we are aware of many many things other people are totally oblivious about which helps and naturally we are also the ones who will be the guides who will be the ones people come to and want answers 
and also the ones who will again build trust because this is the really big thing which we will see over the next two years that people are losing all hope all trust um, they have been just deceived and 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 cheated uh, on all levels and they realize it naturally this is a deep deep wound which is um, felt and yes those of us who are having that deep understanding already will be um, the go-to's this is just the beginning but it's definitely the beginning um, of, of according getting into really deep deep waters anyway i'll leave it at that thanks for joining and listening and if you like please um give it a like subscribe or even share thank you love you all